Hey everyone. I've got a poor connection on one of my devices, but on Facebook, right in front of you, there's Instagram, hi Instagram. And I don't think my cameras are so far that I can't see. Looks like I've got people joining already. Let me turn off this light, maybe the glare will go down. This is all, <laughs> that's much better, okay. Um, my cell phone seems to hold the connection pretty well. Um, my iPad really holds the connection well for Facebook directly. Hello everyone, welcome to the art school at Old Church in Demarest, New Jersey, first Friday. And my name is Michael Portvito, and I'm going to do a demo on doing throwing off the hump. I've got a couple of uh, ideas to get across for people who have experienced throwing. So let's get right into it. When we throw off the hump, generally what we do is we get a massive amount of clay on the wheel. Hey everybody, um, as I said, I'm going to see back and forth. I'm going to have to look back and see who is joining us. Doesn't look like I see anything on the Facebook page. It's a little different. Lots of people are joining. I think my daughter Elizabeth. This is one thing that I was fearful of. In a moment, right now I can hear the parking garage door open. I'm in a parking garage. This is the, the type of world that, that we're living in right now. I'm going to keep going. Uh, so, when you're trying to center a large mass of clay for throwing off the hump, you don't have to worry about the lower area as much. It can be off as long as you have this top section centered and in control. When we talk about how much clay we choose and why. But really, I like to get it you know, organize. I'll bring the clay down and I'll bring it back up. So as usual, we try to keep our hands free from excess slip. Just drop just enough water so that we can have the clay slide through our hands. We don't need to muscle the clay. Lots of activity over on Instagram. And the video seems to be going out. Oh, I see some hearts over here. I see people joining. So let's just say I'm going to make a bottle form. What I have here is a measuring stick. It's a chopstick. And at one end of the chopstick, I've got a rubber band. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the height of the piece with the chopstick. If I'm going to make a bowl form, I would have this type of device. I don't know if you can see it. I'll move out of the way. You see? It's more of a, a T shape. So, the first thing we're going to do is when we're measuring, when we're measuring off the hump, it's very similar to what we're doing when we're measuring on the, the wedging table. We wedge the clay, we make it into a log, and then you stretch the log so that it becomes more like a a limb of a tree, or a, a very like a like a, a loaf of bread, a narrow loaf of bread, and then what you do is you subdivide that up, and the more you do it, the more you realize the girth or the thickness of the roll, and then the uh, distance that you measure with two, three, or four fingers will give you one pound or so. And the more you do it, the better you get. It. So what I'm going to try to do here is measure down two inches, two, two fingers, I'm sorry, two fingers. I like to get started early and really mark off that clay that I'm going to use for the pot. Go in. Sorry about that, I'm going to go in, primarily with my thumbs. This is going to be a bowl shape. For throwing off the hump, one of our concerns is that we don't compress the bottom, the inside floor of the pot. And if we don't compress that floor, what will happen is you'll get S cracks. And even before you get it through the kiln, the bottom will crack. 
So if you notice, I'm bringing up the form very much like a cylinder. I'm not going too thin. Again, my Instagram connection on my phone doesn't, it's really working, but then it goes out quickly. I apologize for that. So now that I've got it, what I think is deep enough, I'm going to start bringing the form out. One of the tricks to being consistent with your pots is to get your height first. In fact, you get a little bit more height than you actually need. So right now, okay, he said what he said. So we're making an adjustment here. I'm a little bit short on my depth here. Two things I can do. I can go down and give myself a little bit more depth. Okay, all the while. I'm not using much water, and I want to make sure that that bottom is nice and compressed. The more water I use, the sloppier it's going to get down there. All right, so again, I've got a, what essentially is a deep bowl. Okay. Again, I haven't gone below that initial mark because I want to keep consistency with my my foot ring. When I'm throwing the bowl in a lot of forms on a bat or just straight up on the wheel head, I'll leave myself at least one finger thickness so that I have enough room left over for a, uh, for a foot. So I'm going to check the depth. What I want now is actually for the, yeah, that's, that's plenty. I want the, um, it's missing by about a half an inch. I want that to be the case because I want the, uh, the pot to start out taller than I need it to be. After it's taller than I need it to be, I can use, I can even use a sponge, but these are really cool and I've used them in the past. These are coconut shells, and you get them a little wet, okay, or any kind of shell. And the ribs, sometimes the ribs don't really have the, the curvature that you want. So now I'm just going to go out with a nice steady hand, and I'm using my camera as my mirror. And I don't need much, any water actually. Very gentle. Don't overstretch it. Very light touch. And I've got a nice, beautiful curve on the inside and on the outside, if I can say so myself. So, Old Church is in Demers, New Jersey, as we, some of us know. Ah, I'm short again. Oop. Okay. <laughs> First one off the hump. What I can do is I can bring that wall up a little bit on the bottom side. There it is. Again, no water. Just giving that lower part of the bowl a little bit of lift. That's right. You have to think practically. What is this going to be used for, this vessel? Obviously a bowl is going to be used for serving perhaps a nice warm soup on these cold spring mornings and afternoons. Um, so you don't necessarily want the, oh, <laughs> let's see if I, that's part of the problem, let's see. All right, I made an adjustment. Now it's right, I, <laughs> I forgot which end was up on my measuring device. So I don't need the lip too thin. Let's get this one off the reel. What I want, I can do maybe something decorative at the top here and give it a little contour. curve at the top. So, all right, that's that's nice perhaps. One of the things that we want to do, one of the many things we want to do is again isolate that pot. And if I use the tip of my finger, the bony part of my finger, I can I can curve out a nice area that I might want to use 
And then what I'm doing here is I'm guiding this tool. If I just use one hand, or if I use two hands like this, I find everything bounces. But this thumb, this opposite hand thumb, usually that's our outside hand, seems to get a lot of attention in terms of how much lift do we do and how much width do we get. But this thumb helps us when we're centering, helps us when we're pulling up. So while I was doing this move, where I was isolating this amount of clay at the base, it's hard to see. Maybe that's why the light was there. That's a little better. Oh, that's not too bad. All right, so there's that area right there. I just got it with my thumb. And just underneath there, I put the tip of this tool in just to carve out that area. All right, so let's see if we have a place to put our pots after we make them. That's always a helpful thing. So I hope everyone's doing well in these times. Now, dry your hands so that you can pick up your pot and place the wire and just this wheel is going to jump. And it's going to jump. All right, so I'm going to do it the other way. This foot pedal is not cooperative. So I'm going to hold the tool, the wire tool. With my left, my this hand right here, my left hand, I'm not going to pull with that hand. I'm just going to pull with the one hand, and I'm going to pull straight through. And see if it comes up. Now with dry hands, I can get underneath there, and without disturbing the pot, take it right off. And put it over here. All right. So let's pull up a nice little tea bowl. space here that no one's supposed to know about. Of course, 7, 7, 15 at night, people are uh, coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> I was trying to do work in my car. Don't do that. <laughs> Good gosh. All right, so again, isolating some clay. You know, I'm going to wing it. I haven't made a, bowl, a bottle in a couple of months. But one of the things that you want to remember when making a, a narrow neck or a closed form is as you're pulling up, think in thirds. So right now, I'm isolating, and just above that isolation, I'm going to pinch the clay and pull up pretty much a, a cylinder. So I want to get that bottom third as fully developed as possible, if not finished. Yes, I'm going to have to do some trimming later, but at this top area, it's very tempting, especially when you're making a large bottle with a large closed form. You get ahead of yourself and you make that top third too thin. And if it's too thin, when you go to collar it later, it'll fold because it has doesn't have enough thickness to, 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 uh, to collar it. So again, really not much water. I can go in with my curved knuckle. We all know about this. We put our thumb, we put our thumb inside of our index finger. We go in. Don't worry about the pot stretching. And hold it down at the bottom. See, this thumb is guiding this hand. A very light touch here. You're going to go down a little bit so you get that compression. I didn't really add water. And now I'm turning my hand. I'm going to show you how my hand is. And try not to block your view. Come out wide. So I'm trying to create a nice curve on the inside because I'm trying to make a teardrop bottle. Okay. So what I did was I went inside and then I turned so the flat part of my index finger was actually making contact. And from there, you bring it straight up and really not too thin. I don't have a throwing stick. But as you can see, I have a basic straight form. And on this thumb again, this thumb, this back thumb, is really the thumb that's making that mouth more narrow. A nice curve. Bring it up. And again, the trick is to not get it too thin.
grip to it. Again, I'm not trying to make this thin on this top third. I just want to leave myself enough play so that when I close the top, it's not too thin. see what I'm doing with my hand, but I've got this finger tucked inside, and I was collaring, and it folded, so to keep it supported, I just tuck my finger inside a little bit. And when you're doing a bottle form, the outside hand really takes over. Sorry, folks. All right, so now I'm just going to come in, tuck under with my thumb. And when I tucked under with my thumb, I was able to capture enough to start the vertical. Another way to close the mouth. School of Old Church is Michael Zakin. And it's funny how even after so many years of throwing, one of the things I remember her saying, because she she made some beautiful forms, but she also believed in not making something look as though it was exhausted. So I'm gonna get this off the wheel because it's getting a little tired. Not softer or, or light or anything, but it's losing that character that Michael used to talk about. So, I'm just going to pull this out a little bit. Shining. My shirt and that light, it's kind of hard to see. That's a better view over there going back and forth about this light. Yeah, so you get a better feel if I don't have the light on. All right, so just a light touch with the chamois, the fake chamois. And bring it up. Ah, a little bud boss. Dry our hands a little bit. How are we doing, folks? So, we offer so many classes at Old Church, but like so many places these days, we've had to suspend classes. Very sad time. Um, we want everyone to be well. That's the criteria. I, uh, I'm not at the studio. I'm in a parking garage. I don't have a mask on. There's, there's no one near me. Um, there's just a lot of cars. <laughs> Honestly, I've been out here easily two hours and nobody was around. I did another project and uh, of course, now that, now that I want to do this, 
but it's all good. It's all good. All right, so it's a little trick. You give the pot a little bit of a up uh, and a wiggle, and it comes right off. So again, when centering a large amount of clay, and the image on Instagram is a little higher, but even on Facebook you can see that uh, I'm going to get down here, and notice how my my thigh and my left arm are really connected. So I'm getting strength and I'm holding that position because my left leg is really holding tight. So I'm going to take a moment, lean forward, and see if I can, literally if I can read some people's comments here. Pardon me for my reach. I've got people waving. Uh, I think I need better glasses. I just got these. Aaron's here. Deb. Hey, Marilyn. Okay, people are watching. This is wonderful. It scrolled on Instagram, so I can't really see who was there. But I see a lot of waves. Hi, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. All right, so again, that leverage. So I bring the clay up, and when I'm coming up, I'm using the heel of this hand. And I'm just controlling with the really the fingertips and the fingers of my right hand as I come up and I control it. I like to get that base cleaned off a little bit so that I can get my right hand in there. But when it's this tall, I'm going to start high and guide. Notice my shoulder position. My, this shoulder is a little higher. Gives me a little bit better leverage. It's all about leverage. And you don't have to hurry. If you hurry when you bring this down, you're going to cause twists. You don't want twists inside the clay. So if you do an open form and you have twists in the clay, you're going to have a twisted pot. All right. So let's open up again. So I went through that quickly before when I was talking about measuring weight of clay. So picture this. You're at the wedging table. You're spiral or you ram's head wedged. And what you end up with is a pretty massive wide, for this amount of clay, this is a little less than 12 pounds when I started, um, it's going to look like a big chunk of uh, bread, big loaf of bread. If you were to cut that up with a wire, you could, you could uh, break it down into increments that you need, not for this project. I'm talking about using that technique for measuring when you're throwing off the hump. Bear with me. So the connection is we're at the wedging table. I'm going to wait for Instagram to come back. So we're at the wedging table, and now we've got a big, massive, fat piece of bread, uh, <laughs> piece of bread, uh, piece of clay. If you turn it horizontally, if you turn the clay horizontally, and then turn the clay horizontally, hi Instagram, and then toss the clay back and forth and rotate it after each toss, what you'll end up with a narrower loaf of bread, a narrower loaf of clay and it'll become a massive snake-like um, section of clay. And then, as you do this, you'll notice that if it's maybe three inches round and you have three fingers and you twist that off and you weigh it in your hand, then you weigh it on the scale, bam, two things happen. You'll learn how to get closer to that one pound that you might need for the 50 mugs that you make. Or you'll also, um, well, that's, that's basically it. You'll, your hands will learn weight, and it'll teach you um, a consistency, as opposed to doing it laboriously with a, uh, pardon me, cold nose, um, with a wire tool. Okay? You don't really get the feel of the clay. And when you tear, and you're a little bit less, and you tear a little bit more, and you slam it down, and you slam it together, the clay likes to be activated, it likes to be worked. So, how is that How is that appropriate to what we're doing here? I basically can see this top area of clay is again at two to three inches in diameter. So if I want to make a cup form or a mug form, my standard mug form, I might go three inches, I keep saying inches, three fingers down, note where that mark is, Okay. Put 
put a serious indentation there so I don't go below there. So we'll put a serious indentation three fingers down, and now I know that this is basically, I'm going to say this is roughly one pound of clay, and I make my mugs out of one pound of clay. So I'm going to continue now. If I make a, make a mug out of one pound of clay, these fingers are underneath in that groove. If I want to do it this way, I'm holding that groove so it reminds me to keep that groove. I'm going to go down. Now I know if I practice, I go down a certain depth, it's going to match the depth of my fingers. I'm just going to check the time. I think we're okay. Oh, a couple of minutes. Let's make this mug and we'll wish everybody a good time. Okay? So now, what kind of mug are we going to make? We're going to make a mug that has a very square bottom, very little trimming. Let's do that. Um, get any extra water out of there that I don't need. Now I'm going to go down into the center of the pot to create the floor. And as I go down, I don't need these outer fingers, but a lot of us know this already. I'm just going to use these two middle fingers and I'm going to go down. And how far down, I'll have learned by using these fingers here as a guide, my outside fingers. And I'm going to go straight across the bottom. I don't need too much speed. And I'm going to get a nice wide, flat bottom. I left a little bit in the middle, so I'm just going to go back. There. And now, from here, it's the same technique as before. I bring this pinky out here sometimes to help guide the clay. But it's just like before. We're going to go up with the pyramid technique. Okay? So in other words, I don't necessarily want this narrow here. I want this wider. So I'm going to go and create flat bottom with a narrow top, and then after I get it as tall as I want, as thin as I want, then I'll worry about form. Okay, don't build up a whole bunch of water. Right now, if I were to cut this in half, it would look like a donut. It's very thick right in here. So the next move, strong outside hands, strong outside fingers, I'm going to come in here, resist with the inside hand, I'm looking in the, in the camera, in the mirror. And I just transformed that shape from being very round and chunky down here by using my outside fingers, these two fingers, and my inside fingers just were the guide. And I just pushed the clay up along those inside fingers. Let's add just a touch of water that's a little bit dry. So now we'll do the same thing again, but this time the inside fingers, I just wanted to square that bottom off a little bit because it kind of got around. And now, again, I'm going to go straight up. I'm going to use the, basically the, that's the middle finger of my left hand. And it's really just the middle finger of my left hand making contact. Okay. So we went from that very round, bulky shape to a shape that's a lot taller. Not a lot taller, but taller. And... little bit thinner. A lot thinner, actually. Now, if you notice, there's a little bit of wiggle down here at the bottom of the pot. A lot of people get nervous about those wiggles. I try to tell them that if you straighten the wall out, either by using the rib tool or a very slow pull, I'm just repeating the same movements, that's why I'm not describing it, you'll straighten out that wall. But if the wall has any kind of, as it does, sees a little twist down here, okay? With that twist freaks a lot of people out. Oh, it's too thin, it's going to collapse. Well, it's not going to collapse because if you create a straight wall and don't create a lot of drag with your rip tool like I just did, I applied a little bit too much pressure. So let me clean my hands. So my, my goal here is to straighten out that twist, straighten out that wall. So I'm cleaning my hands. I'm not adding water to the pot, really. I just wanted to clean my hands. There's a little bit of water on my hands. So now I'm going to do it again, but this time I want the rib tool to slide down. There it is. Much lighter, much lighter touch. It was too, the pot was too dry. I was talking too much. Ah, me? <laughs> and now I've got a pretty good shape, pretty good thin pot. I'm going to make this a little bit 
flatter, a little bit straighter. Bring this up. Make that lip. Got my sponge on a stick. Trusty sponge on a stick. So again, let's cut this in half so we can see what we did. Um, so what we did here is we made a basic straight form off the hump. We isolated it about a pound of clay. Again, if I wanted to take this off, I'm going to give myself a little bit of a mark, hold my Cool, steady. Just take a little bit, just need a little, little in, uh, blah, blah, blah. just need a little indentation for the wire to carry on underneath there. Okay. Um, so I'm going to cut this off, but then I'm going to cut it in half. Well, a little bit in half. So we can see what it looks like. Okay. So now let's go here. for everybody and we're, we're ending up pretty soon okay, so the wall the wall is just where I wanted it and the bottom is too thick in the future what I'd like to do is I'd like to isolate that clay a little bit better but we seem to be uh, seem to be out of time I think while we're Finishing up. Maybe I'll make something from the rest of this clay. Move it down, open up. Again, I'm going to use that hand position. knuckle tucked under the thumb a lot of people making pots out there in this world a lot of people need a place to be creative a place like old church has been in my life all my life that's how I got to Korea in the first place I was an apprentice in Korea for nearly four years so I'm going to use that same technique that I used on the previous pot, wherein I make a flat bottom, and now I'm going to pull the wall up in a pyramid shape. And again, I'm going to use leverage, this time with my right hand. It's not really my hand that's giving me the leverage. It's my thigh and my leg muscle. As I said, that thumb is tucked underneath here and it's inside my palm so I'm making contact with the lower part of my hand get that a little more narrow and my thumb of my right hand is helping me guide that clay right, let's do it with this social distancing, being very careful. We all miss our families. I miss my daughters terribly. Fortunately, I'm able to talk to them on the phone. Both doing very well. Hard working. Right now, I've curved fingertips of my left hand because I wanted to pull a little bit more clay up. So if you notice my left hand was turned a little bit. Gave me a little bit more grip on the clay coming up. Okay. 
exactly know what this is going to be. Right now, it's just a straight cylinder. <laughs> but this is actually what I was trying to tell people, tell you guys that while you're making forms, oh, the wheel wants to stop. Um, make your cylinder first. Make your V-shaped cylinder for a bowl. And as you work, oh, this is getting crazy. talked about when you have a little unevenness in the, in the wall, the wall is not straight. It wants to collapse and this wants to collapse. Nope, not going to make it. Maybe. Hey. All right, folks. This one alive. Yeah, the wheel wants to go too fast for me. Maybe it doesn't want to work. All right. That could be a nice planter. Well, folks, I want to thank you all for being here, and I will try to go back if there's any questions that were asked, and the connection with my iPhone, I apologize. I hope everyone had a good time. I had a wonderful time. Everyone, please be safe. I'm going to, everyone, please be safe. Love you all. Take care. Bye.